We're going to start this video off with saying you guys are so lucky that I keep a stockpile of every video I've ever made because I keep getting so many requests for different things that require me to go back through my archives and um, pull little clips to put these videos together. But on that note, I keep getting a lot of questions about the Great Dane Super Surfers I've had and what I think of them and what I've done to all of them. So I'm going to put this together for you guys here and I hope you enjoy this video. But for those of you that have asked, this is for you. I've been flying from town to town, from London to Taiwan. I've been all around the globe trying to protect your soul. So here we go. If you guys remember, I tried those lug tires on my old Great Dane, and uh, they worked awesome on dry ground, but as soon as the ground got a little wet, a little damp, not wet, damp, but soft, uh, they were horrible. They definitely left some marks, but that, that was my big, uh, my big idea. You guys can go back and check that out from uh, when I tried imitating what they do with uh, grasshopper mowers but and Dixie Chopper uh, mowers, but anyway, they... Um, so I've had two Great Danes, a 48, and then I sold it, and then a few years later I had a chance to buy a 52 that needed some work, and I bought that, and uh, I just really love these mowers for the simplicity of them. They have small tires, but a really wide stance, so they handle hills great. I mean, I've taken these mowers in places I wouldn't dare to take another stander, and uh, it was just awesome, but they would cut phenomenal. You guys have heard me say a million times, if you've watched any of the old Great Dane videos, that the deck is wide open. They didn't over baffle the living shit out of this deck um, on the 48 I had or the 52, which made it awesome for cutting wet, thick, tall grass. I mean, it, it just did phenomenal, and that's what made me go buy another one. Now, there were um, there were flaws to this thing, and to both of them. You had to press down on these two levers that you can probably see sticking out the front and uh, move the pin and put it back in and snap the cotter pin, and that's how you adjusted the deck height. So you had to get off it every time you wanted to adjust the height. And the biggest flaw of the whole thing is it had an older style like spring load on the bottom. It really had no suspension to the platform at all. So you felt everything. Like it was a rough ride on these things. But as far as their cut, phenomenal. As far as the, the way the engines ran, phenomenal. I mean, they were only 19 horse on my 48 and my 52. Um, but they definitely had enough power. I, I took them through so much thick, nasty crap, and it, they just caught. They never bogged down. They were phenomenal. Um, Mike from Something to Look At also had redone uh, redone one of these, and he had a whole video series on it. It was awesome. Did a really good job uh, redoing his, and I believe he still runs it to this day, but people just love these things. There is a lot of controversy over whether or not Great Dane was the first stander. Um, I can't give you facts on that. All I can give you is what's been explained to me. And what has been explained to me was um, the a guy that had worked for Wright, uh, Wright Manufacturing, came up with this design, took the design left and started his own company. And then it only ran for a few years and it went out of service. But he didn't have a patent on it. Um, as far as I know, and then that's when Wright come out with the stander. So a lot of people say Great Dane was the first stander. A lot of people say Wright was the first stander. Either way, I don't really care. It doesn't mean anything to me. People can fight that till the cows come home. But um, it's uh, I really loved them. I loved both of them. But like I said, the main reason I got rid of the first one was because of that platform and because I wanted something that the height for the deck adjusted quicker. And the same reason for me getting rid of the second one eventually was... For the same reason, like I said, the uh, the platform. It's just you take a real beat in riding one of these mowers. There's really no suspension at all. But 
as far as the way they ran and as far as the way they cut, uh, I found very few mowers that can do what these Great Danes did. They they were just excellent mowers, and you know I. I and when I had my first one, I ran the old steel grass catcher, which you'll see toward the end of this video. Um, and then I finally smartened up and switched to accelerators, the aluminums. You guys know my opinions on those, which you've just seen me use here. But um, it just, they were great mowers. And it was pretty much my first introduction to standards. I'd run a couple other standards here and there, uh, but nothing, nothing extensively. So as far as owning a stander in my company, um, they were the first standards that I personally have owned. So, I don't know, a lot of fun on them. They made me a ton of money. You can pick these up relatively cheap. I see them for sale all the time on Craigslist. And uh, a lot of people say older mowers like this, they're hard to find parts for. They're really not. I can get almost anything I needed off of eBay for either one of these mowers. Uh, the few select times that I had difficulty finding a part for either of these mowers, I could get at a John Deere dealership because every single part number on Great Dane standards cross-reference over to um, John Deere part numbers. John Deere came out with one. I don't remember the name of John Deere's, but it pretty much looked identical to these Great Danes. Um, only they were green. But, you see, here's when I had my old 48, and I used the steel grass catcher. But um, they, they really are good mowers. And like I said, if you have the chance to get one, you can't afford a newer mower, you will not go wrong with one of these, especially as a start-off mower until you do buy something else. Um, like I said, they, they cut great, they ran great, and they were just reliable as all hell. They would just last forever and ever. So I had no qualms about buying another one. Like I said, for a little bit of money, you can get yourself into one of these, and maybe if it needs a little bit of work, no big deal. But um, they're super simple to work on, and they just are dependable. So I would definitely recommend one to anybody that wants one. But as always, guys, you don't have to buy what we buy. You don't have to use what we use. This is just a video for the guys that have asked me about my history with Great Danes and asked if I could kind of do a wrap-up video between all the Great Danes. So here it is. This one's for you guys. And if there's any other video requests for older stuff like this in my archives, just let me know, guys. I'm happy to put them together for you. One last thing I want to throw on the end of this video here. I received this nice letter from Jim and Scout. Thanks for the videos and the work shirts you sent us a while back. This Toro hat was from GIE 2018. Hopefully the glass made it to you in one piece. Cheers, Jim and Scout from Scout's Landscaping, or Scout's Outdoor Service. Look at this. This glass is etched. Sorry I put your phone number on there, guys, but I had to show this. This is beautiful. It's like you can feel it raised. It's etched glass. And that thing is awesome. And then, of course, this Toro hat they sent me. Big thank you to those guys. I greatly appreciate it.